Let's study today a problem related to the exponential distribution. Let's first read the problem. During the busiest time of the day at the, co at the coffee store, an average of 24 customers arrive for half an hour period. With this information, and assuming that this, this distribution follows the exponential distribution, so we are going to answer the following questions. What is the probability that the customer will arrive within the next two minutes? B. What is the probability that the time between the arrivals of customers is one minute or more? And C. What is the probability that the next customer will arrive within one and three minutes? So let's focus first in the first question, question A. What is the probability that a customer will arrive within the next two minutes? Remember the formula for the probability density function for this for the for the exponential distribution. And we have that this is given by f of x equal lambda e to the power negative lambda x. So we need to know what is lambda. And this lambda is the, the, the same Poisson mean, yeah, the same Poisson parameter. So this lambda is the average counting per unit of time. And because I see here the, the, the unit of time is in minutes, I'm going to find the average counting in minutes. The average counting in minutes, there are 20 customers arriving per half an hour. So lambda will be 24 divided by 30 minutes to write the, to use the same unit. Eh? So it will be lambda equal 24 divided by 30. And that gives me uh, 0.8. So let's type 0.8. So we know the, the, the value of the parameter, 0.8. So we can make even a graph for this distribution because it will be an exponential distribution going down, but the interception with the y axis will be equal 0 0.8. So let's make this graph, so it will be something like this. Here is the x axis, the y axis, and the interception is 0 0.8 as lambda. But what is the question? What is the probability that, that we can, we can re replace the, the question or, or substitute the question in, the, in this way? What is the probability that the, that the random variable is less than two minutes? So it falls within two minutes, between zero and two. So it will be this area here. Yeah? So the area at the less of two. So we need to compute this area. So if we know integral, we can find this area. But we have a formula for the probability. This is actually the cumulative probability. And the formula for the cumulative probability is probability of x lower or equal than the value t equal 1 minus e to the power negative lambda t. So this area will be, because t in this case is 2, so it will be probability of x less or equal than 2 equal 1 minus e to the power negative 0 0.8 and now I have substitute lambda by 0 0.8 and the time t it will be 2. So we use this formula, use a calculator, and you can get the value for that. Yes, so it will be 0 0.7981. If you are using Excel, for example, if you are using Excel, you just find the cumulative probability for the exponential. So for example, in Excel, you are going to write uh, exponential distribution will be a spawn point dist. So let's, let's, let's type it. Don't forget the equal sign in a cell will be equal sign exponential point dist. And then the three parameters for the exponential, remember, will be the, the value of x first, then the value for the parameter lambda, and fine, unless uh, and then tell Excel that this is cumulative. And the, telling Excel that this is cumulative is just writing true here or number one. So I just type number one and just press enter. 
you can see the answer immediately. Rounded to four decimal is again 0 0.7981. So you have two ways to do it, using the formula or using Excel, but in both cases it's the same answer. Eh? Okay, so that's what we need to do. If the question is probability of the random variable is less or equal than a number, you use the the probability, the cumulative probability function. Okay, now let's find the second question. What is the probability that the time between the arrivals of customers is one minute or more? So we have the same function, we have the same formulas. This is this is for the for the probability density function. This is for the cumulative probability. But now the question is one minute or more. So here is one minute in the graph. They are asking me for the area at the right of one minute. So all this area below the curve, and this is at the right. So all the numbers that are more than one, this is actually all this area here. So let's show you this area, it will be this area here. Okay, now that we have this area, what we need to do is just make, just notice that the area is now known, the accumulated function, yeah? it will be one, because the whole area below the curve is one, 100%, so it will be one minus the cumulative, will give you this area. Yeah? This is the cumulative, if I do one minus this, it will, it will, this one is gonna cancel, and this number will and this value will appear positive. Yeah? So then the question is the probability that x that the variable is greater or equal than a value t. And in this case the value is one. But this, in this case the, the, the answer is just e minus e to the power minus lambda t. So that means that this one cancel when you are going to compute the probability at the right, so more than, and also that the, this, this term here becomes positive, a positive term, yeah, because this will be one minus the cumulative. This is the cumulative, and then one minus the, 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 this one cancel, and the minus that preceding this, this, this minus here makes this positive. Okay, so that gives me this probability, the probability that the value is greater or equal to whatever value. In this case, t is 1. Lambda is 0 0.8, so make a substitution. So this is the value for the probability that the random variable take a value greater than 1. Greater or equal than 1 is actually for a, for a continuous random variable, is the same if I say more than one or more or equal than one will be the same because in this case the the the, the random variable is continuous. Okay, so do this in your calculator and you find the the, the answer zero point forty four ninety three. If you are using Excel, if you are using Excel, then it will be a good idea to use the value for the, so just for the probability density function, but minus one, because the, the probability, the, the cumulative probability that is what Excel have, yeah, is this area. So in Excel, you will need to type one minus the cumulative. So in Excel, will be one minus the cumulated. Uh, the uh, cumulative probability. And this is the formula that Excel has cumulative probability. Remember, type first the, number, the value of x, or in this case t, sorry, the value of t, time the parameters, and also tell Excel that the number, that this is a cumulative uh, probability. So you need to type at the end one or true. So all these uh, arguments are separated by comma. Okay, then you press enter, don't forget the equal sign, okay? So equal one minus the cumulative, that gives you the answer in whatever cell of Excel. 
Okay, you press enter and you get the same answer, 0 0.4493. And that answers the second question. What is the probability that the time between the arrival of customer is one minute or more? And now let's go to the last question. So we continue with the same formulas, yes? But now let's see the last question. And the last question is say, the probability that will arrive within one and three minutes. So if I make the graph, yes? So let's see, the graph will be the same, obviously the same function, but one way, because I have some formulas, one formula that I have is just the area below 3, between 0 and 3. So I have actually the area using this formula, for example, the, the cumulative probability, so I can compute the area between 0 and 3, all the values below 3. Yeah? So this is something that I can compute easily just using this formula. So I can compute easily this area. Yeah? But this is not the question. Yeah? If I use number one, what I'm going to compute using the formula, I have is the cumulative formula. So if I want to know the value of one, the, 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 if I put one in the formula, what I'm going to find is all the area at the left of one. Yes, the cumulative area. Let's put it this way, yeah? So I have this area. Now that I have this area, the question actually is the probability between one and three. The question is actually the degree area here, yeah? So I notice what I need to do is just all the previous area, this from zero to three, make a subtraction of subtract the area between zero and one. Yeah, and you are going to get the area between 1 and 3. That is the question. So to answer the question will be all the probability between 0 and 3 minus all the probability between 0 and 1. This answer the question will be this, so making substitution by 3, minus, or again this, making the substitution of t by 1. Yeah? So if you do that, then we have the answer will be 1 minus, and this is just the formula for the, the cumulative probability, just making in, instead of t, I'm just typing 3, and here instead of t, I'm typing 1. If I make this subtraction, you notice that 1 cancel, that this sim, the, the, the sign of this term will be positive, actually, yeah? So, and this is negative, so it will be actually this minus this, yeah? And if you use your calculator, you type all this in your calculator, you get the answer. The answer is 0 0.3586. If you are doing this in Excel, okay, then you need to compute the cumulate, cumulative probability with the value of x is 3, value of t is 3, yeah? And minus the cumulative probability when the time, the, the, the value of the, the variable is 1. Okay, so it will be like this, yeah? So you type the same with the minus sign. Don't forget the equal signs at the beginning. So here the value of the variable is 3. In the second one, the variable, the value of the variable is 1. The parameter lambda is the same, and in both cases, it will be cumulative. Yeah? So just type just equal or enter in, the, in, in Excel, and you get the answer. Obviously, it's the same answer. And that concludes my explanation of this problem.